Hey guys, what's up? Peter from Peter's Home Projects here. I'm here with another video about 3D printing. And spoiler alert, it isn't going to be about the Hypercube. Before we moving on to this 3D printer here, I first want to wish you guys all the best for 2020. I hope you enjoyed the holidays. And of course, the best wishes and may all your projects come true in the next year. So, next to me I've got the Da Vinci XYZ Pro 1.0 3-in-1. Very long name for a 3D printer. This is a cool thing. Um, why do I got it here? Well, they called me because there's an issue with it. It didn't print anymore. This printer in particular is being used in the school where my kids go. And they got a lot of projects on hold because this one doesn't work. So I'm not going to make a review about it. It's a couple of years old. It's a good printer for when you start to print and you don't want to invest a lot of time in it. But it has its limitations. It's an older printer. It doesn't have all the bed leveling and stuff like that. It does have a future, a feature that you can see on the screen here if it's actually level but it doesn't work that well so but enough talking about this printer let's jump right to the problem and see how we can fix this so let's open this thing up and see how cool this actually is why is this so cool well as you can see it has the heated bed that moves up and down and the x and y axis are fixed on top this means it's the same setup as my hypercube there behind me and I'm really comfortable on working on this thing. So next, let's open up the lid on top. So we can see the hold end and how it's assembled. It looks pretty good. It has a Bowden extruder with the PTFV tube going straight into the hold end. There's a quick release in between. The only thing that I do not like about this is this thing. This is a double PTFV connector and those things do tend to wear over time. I recently had to replace the same thing on my Hypercube. So let's see if we can find a simple setup that works fine. So another thing, and I have to zoom out a little bit. This PTFV tube come, is higher than the lid. This means that if we move the Y axis, you'll see that the PTFV tube will hit the lid and a lot of stress will be put on the double PTFE connector. So I'm looking for a way to make this better and not pull and pushing, pulling and pushing on this PTFE tube. Another thing that I not really happy with is this cable just lying around. So we will see if we can find an option for that. But before we can do anything, we have to disassemble this thing and it's very easy to work on this one. The first thing that we need to do is cut the zip tie. And this cable is very easy to remove. You just gently pull it out and we can put this aside. Next we want to get rid of the PTFE tube that's been holding down with just one little the zip tie over here, so let's cut that too. And then we just have to gently pull this thing out. So with the cables and the PTV tube removed, we can easily pull this thing out because this is a quick release. Just lift this little plastic up and we can take out the hot end in one piece. Now, since I want to make this thing work a little bit easier without a double PTV connector that's been held down with just one zip tie, I need to remove the complete assembly here. And this is pretty easy because this is only tightened down with three screws. 
And when we, re we release those ones, we can pull this thing out. So here's the hotend setup. It's pretty easy. Like this, you can take off the actual hotend. And what's left is the quick release with the PTV tube running, running straight through there. So I want to get rid of this part so I can win a little bit of height so the this connector doesn't get a lot of stress. It's just pulling this thing out. So we just pull the PTV tube completely out. And then there's one small screw back there. I don't know if you guys can see it. We will turn it out and then we got the metal part. This is how the feeding of the filament is working. The filament is pushed through the PTV tube, into this connector, into another connector, into the PTV tube, into the cone and then back into the nozzle. So instead of using all this junk I'm going to just throw them away and I'm going to replace this with this simple part. I printed this out and the way it works, well you've got the middle part that holds hot end and as you can see there are two holes here with two threaded holes here so we are going to mount this directly onto this one and in the same way we are going to mount the hot end And then it looks like this. It's already lost a lot of its height. The only thing that's missing right now is the PTV connector. I ordered a new one, so let's just turn that in. Like this. And I'm pretty sure that this will hold for a long time since I just tightened this down into the plastic. So pretty strong. And well, that's it. Let's put the PTV tube in, mount it into place and see if it actually works. This is set up right now, um, the space between the lid and the previous connection is uh, a little bit bigger, but it still hits the lid. So I've seen a couple of solutions of uh, something in PTV printed out to make a curve so it doesn't hit it. I think I'm going to make something like that. Um, now I have to test out if the filament is feeding without too much problems and then we can see if we can fix out this cable and this is the end result i've got the cable chain running on top to the left i'll take a closer from the other side in a second uh, i didn't manage to film this because the camera was constant in the way so i just powered off the camera and put it aside the ptiv tube seems to work fine if i move the cartridge around you'll see it doesn't hit anymore it does 
seems to be turning into the PTFE connector, but right now I don't think that's a problem for the next year. So we'll see what's happened and what will, how long this will take before it cuts off. Otherwise I have to find another solution for this, but they got my number. So if it do dares to cut off, then I can adjust it. The cable chain is running pretty smooth. It doesn't block anything. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now let's check the end result. I almost forgot to show you guys the end result. Like you can see the cable chain is on the right side, on the outside of the actual print, uh, the moving area of the cartridge. So if I move it over to the right, you'll see it won't block anything and I can move the axis freely around without the cable chain getting somewhere in the way. So those cables aren't going to disturb anymore. I'm pretty happy with the result. Only thing that I actually had to do, make two small holes in here. Uh, I used a three millimeter drill bit and I put a zip tie through it. So this is attached with a little bit of play if necessary. So let's start printing. So while this one is getting ready for his stress tests, uh, of course I will be printing a Jolly Banksy boat. I just want to ask you guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the videos that I make, subscribe. But I'm really curious about what you guys, if you got a printer, what did you made of it? If you got the Hypercube or something like this. I want to see the mods that you got. I'm already in a couple of Facebook groups, but I think it's hard to find good mods that actually work. So feel free. Uh, you can always send me an email. It's I will put it right here. Just send an email with the pictures of your 3D printer and some a little bit of explanation and one of my next videos I'm probably gonna show this. And about an hour later I have this. Well, something tell is telling me that this printer can actually print decent things, but I still have to adjust some settings. So I already took care of that and this is the next one, this is printed at 0.2 millimeters. That looks pretty good. I'm really surprised because this printer isn't the newest. It still prints pretty accurate. And eventually I switched over to some basic PLA and well, I really like this printer. You can even read the text on the bottom. On the back you can't read it, but hey, it's just for printing out some simple parts for the kids. So, I think this concludes this video. Um, I did some simple modifications to it and it's working again. And with the right settings, it prints out perfect. So, pretty good thing. Um, that's it. Uh, see you in my next video, guys. If you have any suggestions or comments, don't forget to put them in the links below. And see you next time.